Hello, today I'm at Wanaroon trying to figure out if there's any real reason or any benefit to take street photos at touristic locations. If you're like me and you live near one of these touristic locations, you can understand they are cringeworthy and often something that you want to avoid. But I think there might be some benefit in including these tourists in your photos if you're really trying to replicate what it's like to experience the city itself. Generally, I think most street photographers avoid places like this with good reason. It's pretty exhausting to shoot at a place like this. You usually don't think you're going to get any unique photos, but I'm trying to test whether or not it's just as easy to get a good photo at a tourist location as it might be trying to get off the beaten path and go somewhere that other people generally do not go. Alex Webb often cites this idea called blind man on a bus where you're meant to get on a bus and travel until things look completely unfamiliar, then get out and shoot in hopes of finding something appealing that you wouldn't have found otherwise, which can work in some instances, but can also completely backfire and leave you in the most boring place to photograph possible. Instead of places like this where you constantly know there's going to be people all over the place completely lost in their own worlds allowing you to build complex frames around them without any real kind of confrontation. The first step to this process is going to be to shoot inside the location itself for about an hour and see what I can come up with. As ridiculous and goofy as tourists can be, photographing these locations does come with good vibes if you can get in the right headspace. And it's had the benefit of making me think of a lot of potential projects to pursue when traveling in the future. Instead of being irritated that there's so many tourists at places that I want to photograph without them being there, I should figure out ways to constructively include them in my photographs. The ability to take my time and practice working with layered and complex frames that I've been trying to do more and more in my photography work lately was an added benefit to shooting at this location as well, even though I wouldn't highly rate these photos as exactly what I'm trying to accomplish. Another benefit to shooting at places like this is that you have to try new techniques and enhance your skills to take something that hasn't already been taken a thousand times before. I did this by trying to shoot frames within frames, which is something I hardly ever see tourists doing, and is something easily achievable for anybody simply trying to up their travel photography game. The trunk of this elephant statue worked pretty well for that, and I'd like to go back again and try for longer to find a subject that I really like there, or shoot with a wider lens because I'm not 100% content with any of these photos. After framing, I moved on to discarded or inanimate objects, which is something that was inspired by my recent deep dive into the work of William Eggleston. I specifically wanted to focus on these types of unnoteworthy items because they provide examples of what these places are actually like in real life. Most photos that you see of touristic locations are influencer type photos that paint completely unrealistic expectations of what you'll see if you go to any of these places. So drawing attention to these unnoteworthy items and creating frames that are completely full of people provide counterexamples to those influencer type photographs. As a local, you have the ability to take your time and explore what's in close proximity to a location so that you can build up a sequence of shots to really display what that location is about inside and out, which is all part of my goal for this project since I don't plan on traveling very much outside of Bangkok this year. I want to build up a body of work that fully explores this city, shows what it's like to be here from a touristic and local perspective, and shows what the impacts are of tourists on touristic locations. Thinking more deeply on all of these elements is heavily inspired by the work of Martin Parr. Not the techniques he uses like vibrant colors or close-ups using flesh. I'm more trying to draw inspiration from why he shoots what he shoots and what he's trying to say with his photography. Because I want to start taking things a step further and develop photos that actually have some meaning behind them besides just having a cool or decent looking composition. Here are a few quotes from Martin Parr. Tourism is the biggest industry in the world. Only oil comes anywhere close. And a lot of that is used in the tourist industry anyway. This folio of images shows tourism, i.e. you and me, doing what we do when we arrive at the beach or another global honeypot. We queue up, we sun ourselves, and we spend cash on often quite useless souvenirs. We then take photos of ourselves in front of the visited site. This proves we have been there and we are part of the world as we know it. Visiting sites is a modern form of pilgrimage and the resulting photos, the ultimate prize. Many countries rely on tourism as the main income generator, but like all things, there's a downside, as tourism can often destroy the very thing 
that people came to visit in the first place. Think of somewhere like Machu Picchu, where crowds swarm over the ancient walls. I'm not saying that tourism is bad, far from it, as it brings livelihood for many people. Organizations like Tourism Concern in the UK make a very important contribution to better understanding of the yin and yang of tourism. This charity highlights the problems caused by tourism, from water shortages in newly developed sites to the pure fear of our ever-decreasing natural habitats, and tries to ensure that the local people benefit from the fruits of tourism. We need to adapt a better understanding of the issues surrounding this huge business. These photographs, I hope, will offer a good starting point, for remember we, in the wealthy West, are the ones that seek out the pleasures of tourism. So we're all in it together. Through this, I hope I can build up a body of work that tells a narrative about the city and helps me learn more about it in the process. Because I want to be less ignorant about the places that I travel to, so doing that as an expat in the place that I live in is a good place to start. I really like this shot and it might be the best one that I got that day. Shooting directly outside of the temple was all right. I think a lot of people take this ferry to come over and get inside the temple and then just take the ferry to leave again. So maybe shooting where they take that ferry to might be a better idea than directly around the temple. For the most part, it's kind of just stuff that you always see all over Thailand and Bangkok, except for the fact that there's definitely gonna be some foot traffic around there where some parts of the city I've explored before aren't very walkable and you will see little to no people in those areas. I think you could incorporate the dresses and elephant pants somehow, but it was so hot on this day that I didn't really take as much time to work out those scenes as I would have liked to. That was paired with the fact that I knew I wanted to go a little bit further outside of this area and see if there was anything worth shooting there. Another reason for running this experiment is that plenty of people travel to a major city, seek out the one major thing to photograph, and then don't take any other meaningful photographs on their trip. I don't wanna be like that. I fully understand and appreciate that I'm fortunate enough to travel often and meander about places in this way. If you don't get to travel very much, I understand that it's really exciting and you wanna see as many things as possible without the risk of wasting your time. To me, traveling and only going to standout locations is like going to the Louvre, running to take a selfie with the Mona Lisa, and then remaining completely ignorant to the rest of the art that exists inside of that building. I wanna question my purpose and pursue knowledge wherever I go in the hopes that it might allow me more opportunities to engage with people who are trying to do the same thing. Another part of this experiment is to see if there's any value in going further out from these locations to discover compositions that might be more difficult to replicate. And once I got further out, there ended up being a lot of things worth photographing. For instance, in terms of things that were more interesting, this random parking lot with these older cars in it was pretty cool, worth checking out and worth shooting. None of these photos are incredible, but it's definitely something I want to get better at. Once I went even a little bit further out from that, now I'm about two kilometers away from Wa'arun, this soy offered plenty of awesome opportunities and made me lean towards that thought that getting lost is better than going to these touristic traps or well-known places. These trees were blossoming all over the place, and they offered me an opportunity to shoot kinds of photos that I don't normally go for, which I really liked. This cactus with the PVC pipe offered me some of the better shots that I liked of the day. It's just a weird, random, again, kind of Eggleston-inspired shot. This canal is the kind of thing that you see all over the city as well, so if I'm trying to really embody what Bangkok is all about, getting better at shooting these is something that I'm going to have to do. Although it did offer a lot of cool compositions, including different bikes driving around, again those trees that were blossoming on the side, and I really like the shot that I got with this ladder. More than anything, this little jaunt made me realize how easy it is to get away from the chaos that is persistent in Bangkok. It's almost non-stop that you're hearing loud noises here, but this area was very, very calm, very relaxing, and very nice to just walk around. And it does really showcase a side of the city that you don't often see photographed.
overall, I'm pretty happy with this little experiment. I got a few photos that I like a lot. Not too many that are great takeaways, but good evidence to support that I should just try to do this rotation where I include touristic places as well as obscure and off the beaten path places. Really both offer pros and cons. And I'd like to know what you think as well. Do you shoot around super hype and touristic places all the time, or do you try to get off the beaten path? If you got anything out of this, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, keep developing.